Most parts of the entertainment industry suck. I modeled before I did social media. My mother agent would call me and yell at me for drinking a glass of milk. Like, people do not give a f It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an F. Hey, and the F is for phenomenal. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I am recording from WTF Studios in New York, my favorite place to record. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'm sitting here with the sexiest blonde I know, <laughs> Lauren Gray. Please. Thank you so much. No, I mean Thank that. You. And anyone I've said that to on the show already, I don't mean it. Like, it's Nolan Void. <laughs> you really, truly are. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I was. <laughs> we had a bit of a a bit of a run, and I was. And I'm an hour late. Um, and I did not mean to be. But honestly, so what time did you wake up? I I woke up at six thirty, and I was out at the bar until three. So okay, that also could be a contributing factor <laughs> to why I'm late. How long um, have you been twenty one for? Um, I turned twenty one in April, so that would be like three or four months. Yeah. I'm not very good at I'm math. I'm not math. So I can't. I, I'm, not mm, math. I'm not math. <laughs> no, it's completely fine. I am shocked that I was even here on time. I'm 15 minutes late to everything and I always talk about it and I'm like, I have to stop. I'm actually finally not shaking because I hate inconveniencing people. It's like the, my biggest like gripe. I can't do it. Yeah. So I'm very sorry that I inconvenienced you today. You, you did not inconvenience Thank me. You. If anything, I was like, oh my God, this feels good. Like I can actually chill. Usually I like walk into a recording disheveled like, oh my God, you are completely fine. And thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I did a huge deep dive into just your life and your story. And like how many followers do you have on TikTok? 54 million. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere around there. That is crazy. And then you have 22, 24 on Instagram. Yeah, 24 on Instagram. I know that for sure. Would you give me a shout out? Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, you yeah. have me on your podcast. I must. <laughs> yeah, but if you could just like post a story and like tell everyone to go follow me, I'm totally kidding. But that's huge. And at one point, you had the most followers on TikTok. Yes. And you started by posting on Musical.ly when you were 13. Yes. So in middle school. Yeah, in middle school. So seventh grade, I think. That is so crazy. And Musical.ly is what TikTok was before TikTok? Or was yeah, it different? Yeah, so Musical.ly was bought by um, TikTok, basically. Or they, it was bought by another, right. you know, the company outsider. That. And then they turned it into TikTok. Got it. And you were just posting videos or what was it? I was lip syncing. So I was just lip syncing the songs mm. and I was saving them to my camera roll. Mm -hmm. So I would make a video for my Instagram, save it to my camera roll. And those videos were being posted, like, you know, how it automatically does. Right. And I didn't know that I was going viral on Musical.ly until I had 30,000 followers. Stop. Because- a bunch of random people started following me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, end of sixth grade. I had an Instagram for my school friends. And then <laughs> all of these random people started following me. So I thought there was a problem. And then, yeah, I, fi <laughs> I figured it out. You thought there was a problem. Yeah. And then I realized I'm just famous. I was like, maybe, I was like, maybe people think that I'm someone else. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, the, then I figured it out. Did you have to ask your mom for permission? No, I asked for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I would just post and then my mom caught on pretty fast. So she sort of watched what I did. And then if she didn't really like it, she would tell me to take it down. Got it. Yeah. Because I was... I was I was riskier then than I am now. Really? Oh yeah. Like Cause <laughs> probably because you thought there were like there's no there's nothing that was gonna come back to haunt you, right? Yeah. It's a free for all. It wasn't. <laughs> it was not. I wish I had known. What, so what would you consider risky back then? Like a little crop top? No, I was like I so I was a cheerleader. So I would post like my mom was telling me to take down. I would put my push up bra underneath my sports bra and you know do what I could and then. Yeah, my mom was like, Lauren, be for real. So <laughs> be for real. Lauren, be for real. You're an A cup right now. You're so an A cup and you're you're 12 years old. Um, so yeah, that was sort of my beginning. That's not really I, all those videos were taken down, but my I did some little like comedy videos and I was silly. I love I'm that. A silly girl. Isn't it so funny when you're younger? 
I vividly remember asking my mom for a bra and just to be nice and yes. like let me live my fake life. She yep. let me get like those little cami bra that have like they have no padding. Yeah. It's essentially just like a little tiny shirt. Yeah. But I would walk around in it like, oh my God, I'm wearing a bra. Like this is I crazy. I also had these like boots that I, my parents had got me for a <laughs> pirate costume <laughs> and they had a little heel on them uh-huh. and they were like leather looking and I like to wear them uh-huh. out. They're like, that's a costume. Yeah, but my mom, <laughs> my mom worked later than my dad. So my dad would take me to get food and I would have them on. And he's like, are you sure you're supposed to be wearing this out? I'm like, yeah. But he like doesn't really know but any he better. He doesn't know, but he <laughs> thinks it might be weird. Um, but my mom was like, no. Nah. Yeah, that's that's got to stop. I would wear the sluttiest stuff. I mean, I still kind of will, but like <laughs> so slutty. And then I started to go through puberty and got hips and like a little something mm-hmm. and my mom, I remember, freaked out one day. She was like, you're not you're not 12 anymore. Right. You have a little bit of a body, and, like, this is crazy. Yeah, I get it. I, I feel like I, I cared less about clothing. I definitely went through a phase where all my friends were older than me, mm. so I mm-hmm. wanted to fit in with them. Yeah. And then the clothing got more revealing, and then once I really started hitting puberty, I just got really uncomfortable in my body. So then it went, I worked backwards from that because I was always so skinny and awkward. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once I started filling out a little bit, which I still am, I still kind of have the body of a 12 year old boy. (laughs) Um, But I, I love it because I, I've learned to love it. Yeah, of course. Like I try to be thankful for the things that I can do. Like I can run and I used to (laughs) hate, I used to be so insecure about my chest, but like I can run freely and I know a lot of people have back problems. So I'm grateful for that. Okay. You know what? Thank you for bringing me back down to (laughs) earth because I was staring at myself in this camera the whole time I was waiting for you. And I was like picking myself apart and I have two arms, two legs. Your body is fully functioning and it's working and you're beautiful and thank you. And a great ass. Like that's the most most important. (laughs) You're like, bitch, that's not what I'm trying to hit home (laughs) No, no, no. I, I completely agree. I I had to like learn to yeah to appreciate that my body is right doing great things for me without me realizing it. Okay, so you're wise beyond your years. Thank I you. can absolutely tell. How was that growing up somewhat in the public eye? I feel like I grew up really fast because and and that's what I wanted. Mhm. I feel like I never really fit in in school and with my age group, I always wanted to, I wanted to skip a grade really bad, but they wouldn't let me because they wanted to keep me in the gifted program. <laughs> so they wouldn't with let me skip a grade. With the left hand. Yeah. Because you were left-handed. Left-handed. <laughs> Did you know, at my dad's work, they deemed being left-handed a disability. So my dad told me that I have a disability. I was like, oh, I don't really, th- I just can't like golf with everyone sometimes, right. but <laughs> I, I've been fine. Um, but yeah, I feel like I didn't really fit in with most people and I know I'm sure everyone's I know everyone says that but um no I don't think so I mean like the I remember like the student body president in my grade was like my arch nemesis but like really thrived and everyone <laughs> loved her and she was killing it and I'm like now if I don't like someone I say they have student body president vibes so true <laughs> I'm going to use that. And I didn't even have that experience. Right. I'm going to steal your experience. I think there are some people who do thrive. And high school is obviously hard for everyone. And same with middle school. But I didn't make it that far. You didn't no. make it to high school? No. Really? I was. Well, I finished school. I graduated when I was 16, but not from public school. I left in eighth grade. Oh, you left? So I'm always so interested in people's high school stories. That is that is insane. So at eighth, like in eighth grade, the you left. Yep. I, I was going into my eighth grade year. I was cheer captain. I was mm. so excited. And then it, things got really bad. So I, my mom was like, you don't have to stay here. And so she pulled me out and I started online school and then I started homeschool and eventually I got my GED. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. I can't believe I even graduated high school. Like my senior year, they were like, you are failing every single class. And then I got in trouble because I copied from point A to point B my entire thesis paper. Yep, um, and then- but I really thought that was just me taking initiative. No, I I had to finish. I'm in college now, and I had to finish my astronomy final, and I didn't understand a single thing that was happening. And so I just chat GPT'd uh, my entire final. Oh. 
and I had AI write my answers, and it worked perfectly. I d- don't do that. You can get caught now, like, really easily. Yeah, no, you but, did it the one time. You'll never do so it wait, again. This is wink, actually wink. so funny, the way I found out about it. <laughs> there was, I was at a dinner, and a lot of the, like, guys at the dinner, I didn't know them, but they happened to work at SpaceX. So hmm. I was doing my astronomy quiz at the table and he was like just put it into this ai and it'll answer it for you i was like you should know these answers a because you work at spacex and this is an astronomy <laughs> yeah. quiz but i did and i listened to him and it worked out but now they have like stuff that tracks they can they can see right yeah. like what's what chat gpt yeah, they is generating have ai that learns ai and can detect ai and then there's an ai to combat that so it's just this endless back and forth of things that are smarter than me so you can't write into chat chat gpt um make sure that this won't be able to <laughs> be detected can. online that's so smart maybe you can um chat gpt 2.0 you just heard it here first and lauren and i are actually going to start it and we're going to charge 122 dollars so much and if there's any investors watching this Mm -hmm. you can Mm -hmm. hit us up that's crazy i used to have to do it the old-fashioned way and just scour the internet for hours Mm -hmm. to get you know my responses for questions yep and now there's chat gpt yeah it just has it just knows everything which is so scary terrifying so i want to jump in to to a few things. One of which is you and I have a lot in common. Oh, really? Because I'm actually 21 as well. No one knows that. <laughs> no one kidding. knows that. <laughs> I love when I look at myself in the in the thing and like I I will publish these things on YouTube and my mannerisms and the amount I look at myself, touch my hair. Oh, I like try to get my bangs <laughs> out of my face because I didn't do them today and I'm I just look so disheveled. So no. I'm like you look stunning. I was like, the fact that you thought this recording was at noon and really was at 11, you look like a superstar. And you were up until 6 a.m. getting crazy. Yeah, 3. I was, I was, it was a weird time. I love weird times though. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. I don't want to have like too much fun. I want it to be a little, a little you know, like you leave and you're like, hmm. Yeah, I don't know I how feel I feel a little about weird about that. About that. I, act, I feel like that's basically every time I drink alcohol. I'm like, yeah. I, I loved that, but I hated that at the yeah, same time. Yeah, I just hate the anxiety yeah. because I leave and then I wake up feeling like, who did I offend? <laughs> who do I have problems with now? And can yeah. I go back here? There's a bar somewhere in New York and I don't know which one it is. And I need to find the name because wherever it is, I'm most def- my picture's definitely on the wall. Like, okay. I made out with the bartender and then I left without paying you're my icon because I just assumed he had it covered uh-huh um <laughs> I assumed the bartender had it covered then he then he like te- I never responded to his text but I'm so genuinely terrified of accidentally walking in there one day and it's just a picture of me at like 19 yeah like plus like, like you're like 80 leaning across the bar like yeah. yeah they're like this girl she owes us like 200 dollars. my biggest fear Well, the thing is, is I'm going to give you advice as a 31-year-old, and your parents are not going to like it. I think ignorance is bliss, Mm -hmm. and if you don't remember it, it didn't happen. I agree with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So thank God you don't know the name of the bar. Yeah, I just don't know. And one day I'll walk in there, and I'll be so, so scared. But until then, yeah, you're right. But also, you'll just deny until you die because you won't even know that that was the bar. And you'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure I was 19. So, like, Mm. who's really in trouble? Thank you. Maybe they should get a better scanner. I'm just being silly. Yeah. Being a goofy girl. And in your defense, I do think there should be a rule that if the bartender does make out with you, then you do not have to pick up the bill. Exactly. No, I agree. I felt like I did my, like my work here was done. Yeah. It was a date. It was essentially a date. Like I put in the hours, I put in the miles. Mm Mm-hmm. So the least you could do, you know? I completely agree. And I think it's kind of like rude that he was even going to charge you. I think half of the bars in New York, I would just leave my credit card and I would always be way too embarrassed to go back. So I would just like get a new credit card. Yeah. No one needs to see me like that. Yeah. You are a self-proclaimed serial dater. Yes. Same. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I've gotten better. I've been single for eight months, which is a like, it's a record for me. Yeah. Um, So I'm really proud of that. I don't think I've even made it eight months and I've been alive 10 years longer than you have so why do you think that we're like that like why do you think you are always in a relationship I think it was a combination of things I think it was 
Now I feel like if I say things, I'm going to feel like I'm attacking you. No, 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 no. Oh my God, girlfriend. Okay, cool. I am, I talk shit Just about Just because I'm insecure doesn't long. mean you are. But uh, I, I think I definitely <laughs> for sure am. Mine stemmed <laughs> a lot from that. It was like uh, looking in all the wrong places mm -hmm. for who I was. So especially right after my mom moved back home, I was sort of on my own and I was just about to end a, like a three-year relationship. So I was with the same guy from 14 to 17. And then that relationship came to an end, people grow apart. And I was just immediately looking to fill the void of you know, my parents not being there and yeah. just having that one person that's there for you selfishly. So I got myself into so many weird situations. Like I, the, the vetting process didn't exist like until now. Right. Because I just, the first person that would look in my direction and be like, wow, you're great. I, I was like, cool, move into my house Same. and I'll take Same. care of you forever. Mm -hmm. Um, my, I had an ex who was quite a bit older than me who lived with me and I took care of him for, you know, two years. And from the time I was 17 to 20, <laughs> um, don't remember. But I had him seriously tell me that he was going to be an astronaut. Mm. And I was like, please get a job. Like, please. <laughs> like, this does not look good for me. Please, for the love of God, like, work anywhere. You can be an astronaut, but in the meantime. In the meantime, let's do something else. He was going to be an astronaut. He was going to be a bartender. He was going to be uh, an actor. He was going to be an artist. He was, there's, a, the list goes on. Okay. My parents came. They were like, Lauren. You're, you're like, mom, he's going to be an astronaut. He's, he's, NASA, hello, ever heard of it? He's going to be in space. Yes. So soon. Just wait on it. <laughs> um, but I couldn't wait on it anymore. So, uh, after, and that was, that was the second one. And then after the third one, I was like, just so icked out mm -hmm. that I was like, you know, there's, there's a running theme here. There's a, there's a thread. And that thread is that I don't believe in myself and yeah. I don't have the courage to be alone and I need to find that. That just hit home. Hit home. It's tough. It is. It really is. And I've been the exact same way. You have an excuse because you are still extremely young and you're like navigating, figuring but it, it out. But it doesn't matter because if you find some sort of success or your life is a little bit um, left field, right? You, mm -hmm. you do something different. You work for yourself. People don't realize how isolating that can be. Yeah. And then when you feel isolated, you're trying to fill that. Yeah. And that was one of the hardest things I've had to learn about myself mm -hmm. and face. Yeah. And... I just had to learn how to, you know, be, alone. be on my own at night. And like my friends aren't always going to be able to come over. Yeah. Like my friends, <laughs> my friend and her boyfriend are my best friends. Mm -hmm. I'm like the ultimate third wheel. <laughs> and it was his birthday the other day and they were going to have a movie night as a couple. And I was like, guys, <laughs> you free for dinner? <laughs> You're like, what are we doing What for are we birthday? doing as a group? <laughs> like they, they... I was their Valentine. So <laughs> I try to get in involved where I can. But that's a really hard thing to realize. Like, you're not always going to have someone there for you. So you have to believe in yourself. And yes. you can stand on your own two feet and be like, okay, I got this. I think the reason I have always been a serial dater and still am is really the same reason as you is just looking and seeking safety in other people, mm -hmm. Lana Del Rey quote, but it's so, so accurate. Yeah. It's like a safety net. And I had a therapist tell me this once and I've always like thought about it. I thought it was so smart. When you are constantly leaning on a person that you're dating to make you feel better or give you that comfort or that safety, you start to lose that ability to do it yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't think I ever even had it, to be honest. Yeah. It's something I had to learn. Yep. Um, but it is, it, life can be isolating. And mm -hmm. I mean, are you from New York? No, I'm from Utah. So is your family there? Yes. Okay. So that's also hard. It's like, I know you're a fully grown woman and you're much older and older and wiser than I am, but that's tough. And that's like, being alone and living on your own, even though it's a part of life, is such a difficult journey to go on. It is. As, and I like, I feel like it just happened for me so quickly that I was like, okay, who's going to be there for me? Right. Even and, though I had my family. And you lived by yourself when you were My home. mom moved back home right before I turned 18. Um, 
my mom and I are so similar mm -hmm. and us living together, I was like, listen, I don't want us to hate each other. <laughs> like, I love you so much. And she was like, you've got this. And yeah. she knew that I had it. So she gave me that space. And I definitely had my little rebellious phase and like dating, you know, mm -hmm. this guy that's much older than me and doing all of these weird things. I dyed my <laughs> hair brown. I, I was drinking every night and I had, I had to go through that. You know uh, what I mean? Yes. You're, you remind me so much of myself. It's not even funny. I was, I started dating a guy that was 17 years older, but I was also 25. But I mean, that's still extremely young yeah. in the grand scheme of things. I had like the expedited experience, mm -hmm. but it's, it sounds more shocking, but I was already paying rent. My life was just put on this fast track. To totally. Trying to figure shit out. And mm -hmm. I had my parents and I have amazing parents but there is a point where it switches and you have to it's like you're on your own yeah you're on your own kid <laughs> sorry that was fucking I'm that gorgeous person. stunning thank you i would join in with you but then people would be really upset because i don't have your voice <laughs> yeah i you know what you're giving me the the confidence and you're giving me this little pep talk and i'm gonna be single i'm glad for eight months you're eight months single i'm eight months single yes okay. it's like how far along are you i'm eight months along yeah. in my journey but you can do it i was so lost in the beginning before i like got into my groove mm -hmm. because i was just used to like boy where right. is he where am i going tonight yeah and then i had to figure out like okay these are the things that lauren likes to do at night mm-hmm and now I now I love how like I hate sharing a bed with someone. Like I've just gone so far in the other direction. Yes. But once you break through that wall, it it does it gets easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it gets easier. It gets easier. No, I love that. And I actually love being alone. I just I same as you. The second a dude is somewhat attractive and is not like a complete and total loser, actually he could still be a loser. I'm like you're into me. Hello. When are we getting married? We're dating. Like, mm -hmm. that's all it takes. Yep. I need to start being pickier. Yeah. But I think it's also a testament that we're always in a relationship because maybe it just means people are like obsessed with us. No, yeah. Literally, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> why are you so in love with me? I you convince know, myself that everyone's in love with me. I'm like, wait, no, you're so in love with me, right? Like the people who can't relate to this conversation, it just means like people aren't. I as know. Obsessed with I you. have days where I'm like, I'm literally the worst person ever, and who would ever love me? And then days where I'm like, I have such a shimmering, shining, gorgeous personality, and like I'm so stunning. Everyone's right. in love with like it, there's, there's there's no, no in between. Be never, never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> so eight months single, you're not dating anybody. No. What is like an absolute no go that like a quality a dude could have where you're like, there's no way I'm gonna date you. Something a guy could do on a first date, an ick, just anything. Okay, so I have an ick. So I actually went on a date recently, and it did not. It's not going anywhere. It did not go absolutely anywhere it was a 12-hour date which seemed excessive to me okay um so that was like red flag number one so how was it like did he tell you it'd be 12 hours or just kind of spiraled no, into so that? he picked me up and my house was like an hour and a half away he picked Oof. me up drove me all the way back to where he's from which like we could have met in the middle but that's okay um so I was kind <laughs> of stranded which was totally fine but he said in all seriousness um I draw pictures of people when I'm mad at them and I was That's like, the scariest thing I was I've like, heard. oh, I started laughing. I thought it was a funny joke. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you're silly. And he was like, no, I, I genuinely, I draw pictures of, I like famous people, my cousins, like my family when I'm mad at them and I hang it on the fridge. And I was like, mm. now I'm intrigued. Um, also a little, <laughs> little bit scared. And he pulls up the pictures on his phone and he's like taken like five pictures of like he's drawn like characters of people that he knows and Sarah Jessica Parker. And <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, I'm dying. I was like, what did she do to you? First of all. And <laughs> second of all, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. He didn't, I didn't eat the whole time. I was, he didn't feed you. I had, he didn't feed me. I had a movie theater hot dog, which was delicious by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, he draws pictures of people and was then. Was he good? Like, was he a good artist? No. Or were they like stick figures? They were, no, they were like character looking drawings. Okay. Um, I just imagine like, you know, like in the ring or like the, gr like, <laughs> and the <laughs> little kids like, in class and he's just like, <laughs> he's furiously like <laughs> scribbling. I mean, maybe I haven't been there for his, I haven't seen the process. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to stick around to find out. No. But. That was 
like last week that that happened. Okay. So this is fresh. That's bizarre. Was there a picture of you? Do you um, think there is now? There might be now. We have not spoken. <laughs> I had another guy wake me up after we were like out drinking. He woke me up at five in the morning. We went to bed at three. He woke me up at five and he was like, are you ready to work out? And I Bye. was still drunk. And oh my God, it probably sounds like I drink all the time. I swear I don't. Um, Girl, girly pop, you're 21. I do have fun. Yes. But I got out of bed. And my friends were like, why did, did you, you even go? Why did you even go? Yes, because I, I have like a little gym in my house and he knew that. So he immediately walked. <gasps> he let my dog out. I was like, oh, do you live here? Should I like, do you, am I supposed to pay this man? I don't know. <laughs> he like let my dog out. He's like walking around shirtless. So then he goes downstairs and he's on the treadmill Stop. and he's laughing to himself. He's like, do a 10 minute warm up. So I'm like on my Peloton. It's five in the morning. The sun is still down. That's disgusting. And I'm like still drunk on this Peloton. I <laughs> threw up like three times throughout the process. And each time I went back, why did I go back? <laughs> and I like, I, he's like laughing to himself. He's like, I have such a good workout planned. He did like 800 burpees. I've never seen someone That's do that disgusting. many burpees. That's I, disgusting. And I kept leaving and throwing up. And he was like, that just means you're working hard. I was like, no, man, it means I'm wasted. Yeah. And I should not be doing jumping jacks and burpees right now. <laughs> I should be in bed and you should be home. Like, go home. But I can't tell people no. Same. And he's like, afterwards, he's like, you want to get breakfast? I'm like, fuck it, I guess. You're like, you like have your let's Nikes go. on, you're crying. You're like, let's go. Like, why did I do that? <laughs> so that's, I'm trying to get better at um, just saying no to people because, and I don't know why I can't find normal people to like go on dates with, but I always get the strangest motherfuckers. Like, where yeah. did you come from? Yeah. I think it's, I don't know what's worse, the working out at 5 a.m. Or, 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 or drawing. I don't know. Let us know. Yeah. Let us yeah, know what you guys everyone think. Everyone tell us which is worse. Okay, I was not expecting that <laughs> to be your egg. You're like, when they make me pick up the bill, you're like, no. When they are my personal trainer at 5 a.m. When I'm absolutely hammered or like drawing pictures of people. That's <laughs> yes. scary. I wonder where the Sarah Jessica Parker, like, I don't know. where May, that you came know what? from. I think it might be, I think I... I'm a I'm a pretty good listener, mm -hmm. so I think people just feel comfortable, which is fine. I love that, and I I love when people open up to me. Yeah, but like, there are certain things that just shouldn't be said or done on a first date, and I feel like those few things are like yeah part of that fit into that box. Yeah, I am a firm believer that you don't show your true colors until they're in love with you. Yeah, so then you can get away with everything, you know. Yeah, like you keep late. it in your back pocket. A million percent. And I sure. think for men listening, maybe this is, you know, we're, we're letting you know to just keep that shit to yourself. Yeah. Wait, what's your no-go? I'm so curious. Oof. I feel like it kind of depends. I don't think I've ran into a situation like that. I usually have pretty standard dates. I think their drink order can be very telling. Mm. Okay. Like, it, like I went on a date once and this guy ordered a Long Island iced tea. Boom. That's fucking crazy. Boo. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's like the equivalent of ordering like an AMF. And it's like... Oh my God, an AMF. Yeah. An audios motherfucker. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I don't know if they'll, if, they, if people drink those here I, in New York. I hope not. Because there's like, you can, there's so many, the, the world is so vast. <laughs> there's so many options. You don't have to do that. For those of you who don't know. Uh, an audio's motherfucker slash AMF is bright blue. If you're ordering a drink that is that any, like Kool Aid, that that's an absolute no. And I believe, hence the name Audios, it's very similar to a Long Island iced tea where it has rum, vodka, just, they just throw everything gin, in there. tequila. Like who who in their right mind? I mean, lol, me until I was 27. But on a date. To be like, could I get every kind of alcohol in one drink, please? Honestly, like, that just makes me think that you have to be drunk to be around me. It's exactly. I'm like, am I that bad? Like, you just want to black out immediately. Like, I understand you want to be, like, a little loose, but, like, a Long Island iced tea is crazy. That's fucking crazy. So, yeah. like, I will judge you on your drink order. Um, What else is Nick? I think... <laughs> I actually did an interview for a magazine and they asked me like a similar question. If a guy owns a cooler, 
Oh yeah, like, I just there's no reason. My to ex own had one with a speaker built into goodbye. it. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. If we go into a picnic <laughs> at Central Park, you better be carrying shit in a IKEA bag or yeah. a backpack. If you have a cooler with wheels. <laughs> that you take out of the fucking Uber, goodbye. Like, Let alone if it's playing like Fred again. Oh my, oh like, my God. Oh my God. And we're just fucking whipping around Central yeah. Park. I'm done. Like but, I am done. But then like, okay, this might be, people might hate me for this, but also weird if he has a basket, I feel like. Um, Who gave you that? Why do you have a basket? Either why? you live at home or you had a long-term girlfriend. <laughs> then there's nothing between. And both of those are like, can be scary. A million percent. Yeah. Like, you can only carry that in just a duffel bag or, mm. like, I swear to God, like... Grocery bag's fine. Grocery bag. Yeah. It's just, it's, there's something wrong. Yeah. Like, there's something wrong. I agree. And then, like, water shoes. Like, if we do any aqua <laughs> sport... Shoes. But, like, guys really are out here wearing them, aka my ex. With like, the toes? We, you know I, the ones with the toes? Oh, my God, with the toes. <laughs> We stayed at the Four Seasons in Hawaii. That makes me ill. It's disgusting. <laughs> he actually wore water shoes. And mm. I was just like, would, was wearing it around the Four Seasons. And yeah, that was, I mean, that was the last vacation we went on. But I digress. Crazy. All of it's just trapped in there, getting so hot. And like, it's like slopping around inside right. of your shoe. Just take your shoes off and be a man. And we're not doing like that advanced of a sport in the right. water where you need the it's water shoes. It's not the shoes. Olympics. No. Just like we're at a water park. Right. You're snorkeling. Yeah. You're so, oh, then we don't need those. Like just, uh, I'd rather you wear flippers, you know? <laughs> like honestly, I really would rather you do that. But he also had his own snorkeling gear. Oh. That he brought like from home, like you know, resorts will give you it. Oh. He brought his own. It's okay. My my <laughs> ex wanted to go on a bike ride, and I I have like my little like boardwalk bike. He uh, come to find out was a cyclist, so he would mm. clip in. No, oh my god, no, <laughs> clipped in. And no, <laughs> and I was like, uh, <laughs> this isn't the kind of cycling. I thought it was like a cute little like little right. trek around the neighborhood. I didn't know it was like yeah. he's bringing his bike, he's bringing his shoes and his helmet. Fuck it, knee pads in Stop. case. So the shoe, I'm assuming the shoes look like the Soul Cycle yes, shoes, like, like Peloton, and he would just um, take off. And I'm like, a little pink, you like with a little basket in a belt. You're like, this is about the aesthetic. No, like, it's like, why do, you, why does? I feel like sometimes men treat like simple things as like Olympic right. sports. It's yeah, it it really needs to stop. So he can own a bike, but it can't be like one of those We're really high clipping. end. Why do we have to clip in? We don't need to clip in. Oh, Absolutely what? not. And honestly, that sounds like a safety hazard. Hazard for all the people walking on the boardwalk to be going that fast. So yeah, slow him. down. <laughs> What's the speed limit? Slow down, honestly. <laughs> okay, so I want to move on from relationships. However, I do have one question, okay. which is it true? Did I read this correctly? You had a boyfriend who cheated on you, and the way you found out was fans told you because they saw him at Coachella. Yes. Yeah, so I. This is what happened. I was at Coachella. It was, I was actually performing that year. So I was going on with the Lost Kings and which was so awesome. That's a fucking brag. Um, it was great. But my best friend Brooke was in the crowd for Harry Styles. I didn't go. I was tired. I just wanted to sleep. Yeah. So I was like, have so much fun at Harry Styles. I'm so happy for you. She comes back and she's like, oh my God, I'm in bed. Like, Right. She's like, you'll never guess what just happened. I was like, what? <laughs> so she was in the crowd at Harry Styles. And you know how like when you're waiting, you just kind of talk to the people around you. This girl was talking to her and, and she was like, what are you doing tonight? And she said, oh, I'm going to a birthday party. My birthday party was that night. And the girl was like, oh, who is it? She's like, oh, it's it's Lauren. And she didn't say that she was my best friend or anything. She just said like, oh, Lauren Gray, whatever. And... She didn't want the girl to be like, can I come? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah whatever. Yeah, for sure. So she says, oh, wasn't she dating da-da-da? And Brooke was like, yeah, I think so. Like playing though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, Classic that's so move. funny because he hit me up while they were together. Mm. And Brooke ran back from the Harry Styles concert. She's like, can I tell you something? <laughs> and uh, that's how I found out that. Um, that's a kind of crazy fucking way to find out. Yeah. Also, I mean, shout out that girl for like putting your ex on blast. I love that. But also 
did it it sounds like a kind of a brag it was like a flex that's not a flex that's not a flex at all he's not that cool i mean i at that point i didn't really care anymore yeah. i did i cared enough to tweet about it was so this I the astronaut care. yeah well i guess you know what that's one way to find shit out yeah make friends everyone's like rolling on molly like you know they'll, yeah. they'll tell you what's up i guess <laughs> Which, everyone's like an open book honestly all right, at that point, I cared enough to tweet about it, but I was over it relatively quickly because I was like, you suck anyway, and good, I'm not missing out. Good for you. Sometimes you just need to, like, hear something to, like, really, like, end things. Yeah, I was like, like check. That's it. Thank you. Yes. That's another thing. I won't break up with someone. Mm. I'll just let it just do its thing, which is yeah, not cool. I like to let I need to on. work on this, but I let it simmer for way too long. Same. I let it fizzle. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when I broke up with my ex on New Year's, I just – messaged him and I'm I was so bad of me I broke up with him over text I was so mean I was like listen you and I both know and I knew he was like in love with this other girl that he oh. had been telling me that he missed so okay. I was like listen we both know maybe we can be friends one day um go be with her and I think that's where we should leave things yeah. and that's what we did okay that's not rude at all or did you not say the rude part you're keeping the oh rude part no it wasn't it was just rude of me to like break up with him over text but oh. i also am such like i'm such a i i'm such a coward same i tried to do it over text and he showed up to my apartment <laughs> and i was See, like that my heart would fall through my ass because if someone showed up to my house i'm not i'm not answering <laughs> i will be at the window like this yeah i had an x tape like pictures of me that he had cut up and like letters and stuff to my door like a serial killer i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> back up real quick he cut out pictures of you what made like a collage no he had like a letter and then he had like polaroids that were like on his wall that he took off and cut like cut into me my mom still lived with me she saw him pull up she was like don't go outside don't turn your light on i was like okay shout out mom and she waited for him to leave because he was also really scary. So. Um, did he tape the letter yes. and the pictures they were like, on? They were like stuck to my door. I don't know what he used. I don't want to know. You really, you attract guys that are into arts and crafts. <laughs> is, kind, is like kind of the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Maybe oh you're just God. like a creative soul. I don't know. We should look into that. You should bring that up to like your therapy. Oh, wait. Well, actually, you don't do therapy. I think I read also. No, I haven't. Well, if you ever do, maybe that's like something you could look into. Like. Yeah, guys that, some things. Yeah. Why is everyone so creative? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guys and, that love arts and crafts just and it's flock so to me. morbid. Like yeah. cutting up photos of me. Now you're drawing pictures of people that you're mad at. That's yeah. And I <laughs> I feel like I'm also so like I don't do like I'm not a yeller or screamer. I'm like mm -hmm. a I sit and I listen and I just won't talk. Same. So maybe that's why maybe I'm too open. Like I don't close off that like I, I leave it open for interpretation too much. Yeah. You know, it's like free range mm -hmm. to be insane. Yes. I'm trying I to mean, think if I've ever done anything. Have you ever done anything crazy? I'm trying to think if I have. Oh, my God. Have I? Or pff, haven't I <laughs> is a better question. Yes, I have acted completely ridiculous. Never that creative, though. Mm. I don't think I've ever drawn... <laughs> Like, I, no. It'd be crazy if you're like, I do that too. I'm like, I'm like, wait, you don't do that? <laughs> you didn't see the fridge? <laughs> like, wait, that's weird like that you you're don't. literally up there for being late. <laughs> um, so, speaking of Coachella, you did something brilliant where you outed people who fake attend Coachella. I want you to walk me through that. Is there anyone notable? You don't know about this? I mean, I, I, I like know people do. do it, but I didn't, I don't know someone personally. Like, do you know someone personally that's done yes. it? You're like all of LA. Like, <laughs> like most people. And I, I feel like it came across that I was hating. I wasn't hating. If you want to go to the Valley and have a good time, mm -hmm. go for it. But so many people are like, <laughs> feel bad that they're not there or have FOMO. I'm like, they're not there. Yeah. I, I don't think that's you hating at all. No, it was just kind of like a fun fact that yeah. I've always found like, like entertaining. Let's be real. People go to Coachella Valley, they'll go to parties or whatever, and they'll take pictures like Coachella day one, Coachella day two at the little Airbnb. But they're not there. <laughs> that's, 
I, okay, I knew it happened, similar to how people will take pictures on that private jet that's, like, <laughs> stationed somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Why? But I thought it was just kind of, like, a rumor, but, like, there are literally people who do that. Why? But I didn't know they they take it to the extent where they drive hours to Indigo, California, <sighs> buy the outfits, do the hair, and post. But, okay, here here's my thing. Some influencers make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's great. Like, I've, I've been able to do cool things. Why can't we just be normal? Like, why do we have to pretend that we have more money than we do or that we're— why, Who are we flexing yes. on? The general public? Why? <laughs> why? Never once have I seen someone on a private jet and been like, fuck, they're cool. Yeah. I've been like, <laughs> yes. who paid for that? And right. I know that was expensive. And just business class is fine. For yeah. Like, econ oh, so economy's fine. Yeah. Like, why are we— who are we flexing on? Yeah. And flexing that you go to a music festival. Yeah. Like, you know what? A Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> like, I, that's what I'm going to fake. Flex I'm going to fake your <laughs> college degree, you know? Why are we flexing on, like, people who don't care? That Why are we flexing that you paid, I don't know, $400 and secured a ticket to a music festival? Like, that doesn't take talent or anything. No, it's just, like, I feel like it's easy to get caught up in this mentality of like, oh, I have to prove how successful I am. Yeah. And my thing is like, if you know you're successful and, and you're confident and secure in that, who are we flexing on? I Then you don't feel the I don't need. like being flexed on. It's so mean. <laughs> it is. It Take is mean. You. But, also, <laughs> but also I think it's just as a society, yes, most things we see on social media are fake, but I do think – we're a little bit more over it, and mm. the whole highlight reel is not as appealing. Which I'm happy about. Same. Because I, I don't know, it's easy to be like, oh, wow, everyone else is doing so much better than me. And then you find out they're driving two hours to get on a fake private jet and, like, driving to Coachella Valley to pretend to be a Coachella. Right, right. It's, it's all, it's all, there's so many facades. Oh, my gosh. Wait, are you a Taylor Swift fan? Huge. Okay, beautiful. Huge. Okay, did you go to Eris? Sorry, I just have to talk no, about No, I haven't seen her, but please, I'm going to live vicariously through I'm you. I'm like, I don't know what made me think of it. I think it was like a really cool experience. I was thinking of cool experiences. But I want to see her so bad. How was it? Incredible. Life changing. Never well, the same. first time it was amazing. Like, I went with my two best friends. We were in the VIP tent, which was awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, but then the second time kind of sucked because there was a lot of like, people who were like kind of clowning us for being fans which you would think wouldn't happen at a Taylor Swift. Yeah, people that I looked up to there? too like that were just not very nice to me were and they, it's like, like other influencer people okay can I like go on a little rant really quick yeah absolutely so yes actors and there was you know an actor there that I recognized and she sat next to me and she was so like condescending almost really and I was like I was excited because I knew 1980 when I was coming out. Her speak now dress that she does in Chance It In is usually purple. She came out in a blue one. Boom. Like, it's happening. Mm -hmm. So my friend and I are freaking out. I was like, we were right. And this girl looks at me and she's like, what does the blue dress mean? And I was like, well, it's usually purple. Da, da, da. Did, mm -hmm. the whole, like, did, did the whole spiel. And she looks at her friend and she goes, it's usually purple. Oh, like making fun of you. I was like, oh, cleaning. get fucked. Like, I'm having yeah. a good time. I'm here to enjoy myself. I love Taylor. If you don't, go home. Why are you here? And it was so upsetting to me. Like, it frustrated me so much. And I know people are probably going to get mad at me for something that I just said. But no, what? I was so infuriated because I was like, why? Like, that's the, you know what? That's the same bitch that when you and your friends were singing along and screaming that behind you, she was like, oh my God, like pretending, screaming and saying. like right to her friend. That's what I'm saying. I was Go like. Go get fucked. That's girl. what I was saying. Like, who did why? This? Why? And it's like, we, we like know you and like looked up to you and then to like I be at that. a Taylor Swift concert and making fun of Taylor Swift fans is a crazy, That's crazy thing. That's my happy place. Also just I just I know I'm gonna sound ridiculous, but I am a self-proclaimed girls girl and I always have been. I don't understand why women are mean to other women. And like for having fun. Like it's not even like I did anything. If anything, I was trying to help her because she kept asking me questions and then repeating me to her friend. I like hate condescendingly. That shit. And I was having so much fun that I didn't I didn't want to stop the party. Yeah. So I couldn't care in that moment. But then afterwards I was like, dude, you're mm, 
mom. Like, yeah. You're the worst. But, I mean, she was being rude to you for absolutely no reason. And probably because you are a really beautiful girl. You're having the best time. And she just wanted to be a hater. And Boo. I just, I don't like don't girls Don't do like that, that shit. Like, it's it's so easy to just shut up and let someone have fun. Or just don't show up at all if you're going to be like that. Right. Jeez. That's, mm, I, I told my mom. My mom was so mad. My mom was like, why was she, why was she to, in there then? To disrespect Taylor also. Bye. That's what I'm saying. And I'm like... That's another thing is, like, even though Taylor does not give a shit, I was like, you're disrespecting her. Like, this is her show. Yes. You're disrespecting everyone that's here because we're having a good time. And that's what it's supposed to be about. I hate that so much when girls will mimic my voice. I mean, sometimes my friends or shit will do it and it's funny to mm-hmm. me. But if a girl's doing it and genuinely trying to be rude, I'm like, shut, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, okay. So true. Um, Lauren, I do want to ask you one thing before okay. we have to wrap up, which... You dropped your album, Guilty. Congrats. Mm, thank you. You were signed to a record label. Now you're an independent artist, mm-hmm. which congrats on that as well. Thank you. Um, when you were with said label, they wanted you to come out and say you were bisexual. Yeah. When you're not. Yeah. Can you tell me what that conversation was like? So I was in a meeting and no one liked the songs that I was writing. They were not pop enough Mm -hmm. they really wanted me to be like a britney spears-esque artist and that's just not what i wanted to be so i went to a meeting and they were going to play me a song that they were pitching to me to record and i was listening to the song and i write music so i i was listening to the words first and foremost and it was like, I like girls and girls who like boys and boys who like girls. And I was like, did y'all listen to the song? Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's a hit. If you don't take it, someone else will. And this was like one of the presidents. And I was like, I can't sing this. This isn't like, I. this isn't me. He's like, well, it's a hit. It's a hit. It's a hit. I was like, I'm not going to come out as bisexual so that it's a, <laughs> I can have a hit. Like, that makes no sense. So... I I just pushed back. And then after that, they kind of the, the, with plain, the plainest much. way to put it is I didn't fuck with me. Yep. Um, so which was fine. Like I'm I'm glad they didn't fuck with me because I, I could go do my own thing. But yeah. blessing in disguise. Yeah. But that uh, what a crazy way to, to do that, right? That's a very crazy way to do it. And it's just like I remember Demi Lovato tweeted something this is a while ago where she went to her record label and asked, like, you know, how can I advance my career? And they told her to, like, go viral, like, on TikTok, like, something. And she was like, but I want to be known for my music. And that's not, you know, the right. way I want to do it. Which is a very different situation. But it just, it goes to show, like, how just low, like, they're willing to go yeah. in that kind of industry and setting. I mean, most parts of the entertainment industry suck. I modeled before I did social media and my mother agent would call me and yell at me for drinking a glass of milk. Like every facet of the industry has its terrible parts Mm -hmm. and the music industry is brutal and people do not give a fuck. Like it's everyone's so disposable, especially now with TikTok because Mm -hmm. it's instant virality and then you're done and then no one cares. And a lot of, you know, sometimes when people have one song, they can't push tickets and then no one cares anymore. Yeah. So I think as long as you're putting out something that you are proud of, that's, I don't know why I'm giving advice. Like I, you're going to no. go write your album. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I literally go, go was going to ask you for advice because I'm going to launch my music career. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. But no, I think you are so intelligent and just, you had to grow up really fast, but you are an old soul. Thank for you. sure. Stunning. You're so intelligent. And um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I was about to say, so no, she's not bisexual, but I'm not going to comment on your sexuality. No, um, that is the comment. I'm I'm straight. If something changes, uh, maybe I'll go back and sing the song. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, I'm You're like, you remember that it. one song? Could I actually, like, could I actually record that? You're like, that's the first thing I'll do if I yeah, decide no, to change. Yeah, no, it's going to be hit. Yeah. I can't wait for that day. Okay, Lauren, thank you so, so, so much for coming on. Um, where can they find you? Uh, everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Just my name is. And it's L-O-R-E-N, by the way. It is. And thank Sophia's you. S-O-F-I-A, by the way. Sophia with 
an F. Thank you. Okay, Lauren, thank you so much. And Sloots, I will talk to you next week. Bye.